God's put on Alan in my heart for actually a few years, and it's held us in your own stead. It's a good Bible verse, and it's a Hebrews 12, we're going to be talking about primarily today. But dipping into Hebrews 11 as well, it talks of faith, it talks of hope, it talks of inspiration. Come on. It's amazing. Yes. It's amazing. And I want you to grasp that today. I want you to just grasp how amazing Hebrews 11 and 12 is and how it gives, it can, you can draw faith from it. It teaches us as well how to stay in our lane. What do I mean by that? If you imagine a race, 1,500 metres race, long race, and you see like people in starting, and they're running, they're running, but they're actually entangled in everybody's lane, and they're getting all messed up, and it's just chaos, and that's not a really successful race, is it? But life can be like that. Life can be like that. The best way to do a race is stay in your lane. It's just to stay in your lane, and do the race, and as it says in Hebrews 12, stay in your lane, Run the race. Everything that entangles you, everything that hinders us, throw it off. Now, how easy it is, is it to say throw it off? Okay. Really easy to say throw it off. But it says as well, fix your eyes on Jesus. That's how we throw it off. That's how we throw it off. So, a little bit of background. Book of Hebrews, we actually don't know who the writer is. Some say it's Paul, some say it's Luke. There's a bit of a line of who it could be, actually. But what we know about the book of Hebrews is it's God-breathed. Yes. It's God-breathed. Like many of the books, well, all of the books in the Bible, it's God-breathed. And you can live your life from Hebrews alone. From Hebrews alone, you can live your life. So if we just look at Hebrews 12. Oh, I've got the flicker. So Paul went... And wrote this letter. Actually, he might have went to teach it. We'll, we'll say it's Paul, but actually, as I said before, we don't know him. But for argument's sake, let's say it's Paul, because it's just easier to have a name, isn't it? I don't know about you, but that's easier for me. So they went, he went, or, or he wrote the letter to the Hebrews because they were getting entangled, they were getting hindered by life, they're actually backslidden. Yes. Backslidden. Yes. They kind of, they were very distant from God. Yes. And that's just because, do you know when we just when we become Christians, we're like it's like the honeymoon period, isn't it? Yes. It's like, oh my God. Oh my God, let life be that like this for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we? Yeah. But you know, life goes on and time goes on and you can easily your eyes can just go straight. Yeah. I always think that brains are magnetized to default default position. Yes. They are. We're always tempted to look left and we're tempted to look right. But Jesus said to the book of Hebrews, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, don't get entangled, don't get hindered, but run the race, fixing your eyes on Jesus. That excites me because I'm, I'm a practical person. Yes. You know, if there's a problem, my instant thinking is how to apply that, how to apply that to a solution. And the Hebrews speaks of that for me, so that's why I love it, and that's why you know we've lived off it for years. Which one do I press? Right hand side. Yeah, that's it. So let's take a look. Let's just imagine Paul, the author. Just imagine him saying this to them. Okay? Now he wouldn't do it in a northeast accent, we know that. <laughs> and he wouldn't do it to any fashion. But let's pretend he did, right? This is how he did it. Guys! Now just, to, just remember that they are entangled and messed up. Yeah. They don't know what, where they're going. They, they can't see the wood for the tree. So just imagine that. Guys, come on. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We'll go into that in a bit. Come on, throw off everything that hinders. Throw off the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run the race with perseverance. The race that is marked out for us, God says he has a plan and a purpose. Yes. He said it to them, he says it to us. Yes. He has a plan and purpose. And how how to stay on that plan uh, that plan and purpose is to stay in your name and throw off everything that hinders yes. and everything that entangles. So it says there, since we're surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, I'm wondering what that means. When I read that a while ago, I was thinking, what the heck does that mean? People come up with all sorts, don't they, what things mean. But you've actually got to read the chapter before it. 
the clue is it says therefore. Yes. If there's a therefore, you've got to know what it's relating to. So let's have a look what the therefore is. There's a lot of reading today, I'm really sorry. Oops. So Hebrews 11, Paul says in his letter, or his teaching, it wasn't Paul, you know I'm about to keep saying that, yeah. I don't want to keep saying that, but if I say Paul you know that, you know what I mean, do you yeah. know what I mean, have you got it, right, yeah. okay, he said guys, probably didn't but guys, by faith, Noah, being forewarned by God concerning events of which, of which as yet there was no visible sign, took heed and diligently and reverently yes. constructed and prepared an ark yes. for the deliverance of his own family. By faith he yes. did that. He didn't have proof. God spoke to him. He did. God didn't come down and say this. He, he heard him in the way he hears and we all hear God in different ways. By faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went forth to a place that he was destined and received an inheritance, and he and he went, although he didn't know, or he sorry, although he did not know or, or trouble his mind. He didn't know where he was going. Gosh, if God says to you, actually, God has said to us, isn't he? Go. Would you go? You go, wouldn't you? I, I would go. I'm not trying to make a mistake. Actually, I've made loads. And sometimes I think God said one thing. I'm a bit of a dream, a bit like Paul, who isn't here actually. I'm, I'm a Paul, I'm Paul the Apostle. And sometimes I push a door and it closes and I feel a bit dumb. I think, oh, yeah, that's what he's talking. You know, but I'd rather push a door and get it wrong than not push a door yes. at all. Yes. I'd rather do that. It, it's a no brainer to me. Because of faith, Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child, even when she was long past the age for it. That's a bit rude, that, isn't it? You're well past <laughs> it, you're having a child. Anyway, sorry, that's a bit of Tony thrown around. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in prayer over the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when nearing the end of his life, referred to the, prom referred to the departure of the Israelites out of Egypt, and gave instructions concerning the burial of his own bones. Because the great cloud of witnesses is them. Yes. The people that have gone before them. Because of their faith. You can draw faith from their faith. Yes. You can draw faith yes. from your own, what's happened in your own life. And we can draw faith from each other. Yeah, very good. We really can. So when we're thinking, oh, life, 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 God says, Come on, guys, because of this, because of that, because of that. Fix your eyes on me. I'm oh, sorry, I have to speak with my hands a bit, I'm sorry. Fix your eyes on me. That's what God says. But it's not easy, is it? Yeah. But like I said, our brains are magnetised to default position. And the opposite to, a to magnetise is repellent. You have, I don't know what you call it, repelled. I don't know what is it? Retracted. Retracted. So sometimes, what? Attract. Attract. Attracted, is it? Okay, thank you. What? Yeah, I'm totally confused now. So, but when we choose to fix our eyes, it feels like there's a bit of it, oh my God, it's so hard to yes. do. It's because we default, magnetised yes. to our default position, to our old ways of doing it. Yes. And to pull God closer, it's hard. It's really hard. I've been in, not, not so long ago actually, some of you know my situation. I've been in um, a bit of a situation where I was really angry with God and I wouldn't pray. I wouldn't pray at all. And then I felt, and, and it was like that magnet. And actually that magnet gets further away. The more you do the more you, mm -hmm. you know, when you're angry. It's the same when you're angry. If I'm angry with somebody else, my temptation is to like push them away, protect myself, you know. And I'd become like that. I had become like that. And something in me just wanted to shout. And I thought, do you know why not? Give it a go. But actually even that's faith, isn't it? Yeah. Faith the mustard seed. A tiny mustard seed, and that is there. Yes. Even though I'm like distant, I'm saying, God, this, God, that. It does me heading. You do my heading. Yeah. God knows that in me anyway. He knows that I can be disrespectful. <laughs> but you know what? He loves me. That's 
friend. He loves me, and he knows that I'm entangled, and he knows that I'm hindered. And he said, "Come on, Tony, come on, let's get you back. Let's get you back." He did that for me, just like for us. We're no different. Paul says this. He says it. He says to the Hebrews. He says it to us. There's a lot of reading today. Faith is confident in what we hope for, an assurance about what, what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Now, the word ancients makes me laugh because I'm thinking that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about people who've gone before you as the ancients, you know, but we're good. It says this, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Now look, God is a God of differentiation, and Emma's really pleased she's not interpreting right now. <laughs> what do I mean by that? He says that we're all members of one body, aren't we? Yes. We all have different roles. I'm just thinking of Moses, right? God said what he wanted to do, and he's like, no, please get someone else to do it, ask people there, whoever it was. I really don't want it to, go to do with God. But he knew for certain God said that. So God said, Moses, throw down your staff. Well, think of that. That's so easy to do, isn't it? Your staff's a stick. Throw down your staff. Like, it's a bit like spit your dummy, <laughs> isn't it? Moses, throw down your staff. So, like, that was easy. <laughs> threw down his staff. It turned into what? Snake. Now, the throwing down is no problem, but the picking up is going to be a problem, <laughs> isn't it? It's going to be a problem. We had a snake. Our son had a snake, and then he left, and then we were left with this snake. The snakes are horrible. If you like snakes, I'm sorry, but they're horrible. They slither. And they're, oh, they're horrible. What was worse for us is ours got loose. Our snake got loose and got out of a vent that wasn't secure. We lost it for three days. I was petrified it was going to size me up to eat me. It was horrible. So Moses is here with a snake, and he, he picks it up. He picks it off. He didn't know that it was going to turn back to his staff. He picked it off, didn't he? Yeah. I, I don't know if I could do it. I think I might be sick. But he picked it off. Yes. God knew he needed proof. Look at Sarah. This is an example of differentiation, how God treats us according to who he made us to be. Look at Sarah. You're going to have a baby. You're going to, put, you're going to bear a child. Now she was ancient, wasn't she, apparently? She was ancient. Yeah, sure. But God said, you're going to bear a child. And she's like, she laughs, actually, it's documented. What? It's documented that she laughed. So what happened? Time went by. She didn't, she didn't get pregnant. And she's probably thinking, oh my God, maybe I've got her it wrong. Maybe, you know, I know what. And she had the most dumbest idea ever. Absolute dumb idea. She says, I know you have the maid. You have the maid or servant. You have her, Abraham, her husband, Abraham. You have her and have a child and whatnot. And then what happened a little bit later on? She was pregnant. What? A crazy. What happened there? She got entangled. She got hindered. Yeah. What a mess that situation yes. was. What an absolute disaster. And now there was a thing. Who's the first one? Who's the one? Blah, 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 blah. Can you imagine? But what did God do? Come on. The original plan was restored anyway, wasn't yes. it? Yes. God can do that. Now I'm really conscious of time because I went on for 45 minutes last time. But one quick question I want us to consider and think about. What hinders you? Mm, very good. What entangles us? Mm. What hinders us as a body, individually? Really what has God put in your lane? What's God put in our lane as a church? It's very good. Hebrews 4 says this. The word of God has power to cut away the flesh and circumcise the heart 
That is to change lives, to shave away sinful thoughts, words and deeds, to cut away our selfishness, self-centeredness, so that more of Jesus can be revealed. That's from Hebrews again. I'm a, he I'm a fan of Hebrews. Now we are coming to an end, it's going to be a short one actually, isn't it? But I want to tell you a story. And the story speaks of the goodness of God. And the faith, the size of mustard seed, of the person I'm going to talk about. I cry, I'm so, okay, just forgive me, but I'm passionate about the story, and I love this story because it does speak of truth. And it speaks of how fixing your eyes on Jesus gets you through life. Mm. It does. Staying in your lane gets you, through, gets you through life. It does. How hard is it to get entangled when somebody says something horrible about you? I don't know about you, but I get all feisty. <laughs> Actually, they can do that. They can talk about me. This, there's something on Facebook said, if somebody talks about you, it's their, their problem, isn't it? It's actually got nothing to do with me. It's their entanglement. Don't need to make it, my God, how hard yeah, is it? Very good. But that's when the repelling comes in. It's repelling, isn't it? That's when the repelling comes in. Where you say, oh, God said, stay in my lane. Do you know what? It works. So let me tell you the story. There was a young lady who came to church. She was pregnant. She was in a state. She self-harmed. She'd had mental health problems, probably caused by her childhood. Maybe not, maybe it was a bit of both. She was on tablets. She couldn't tell the difference between then and now. So she came to church, she had seeds of information that went into her. She dreamed big, but in reality, she was in and out of hospital. The church found it difficult to see anything of God couldn't see the fruit, I think today they would. They couldn't see the fruit in their praying. It got to a desperate situation with this lady. She nearly died of anorexia. She had a whole church praying for her. The psychiatrist at the time at his last attempt to get through to this young lady, she had, I don't know if you know it, electroconvulsant therapy. I can't remember, it's how we say it, so yeah, ECT for short. And what that means is you have a procedure, of lots of sessions of this one procedure, and it rewires your brain, and actually one of the side effects is your memory's affected. So actually she was forced that, she didn't have a choice. Mm. So that happened. And the best thing that could have happened to her, she lost her memory. Yeah. <laughs> and she'd come round from the procedure and she'd start drinking, she'd start eating. She got a lot better. She started taking more of the word of God. She started realising actually God was there. Yes. I had never, she had some weird scenarios, godly scenarios, but she didn't know it was godly. And God said, you know, I was there. Remember that, I was there. Did I say she dreamed big? Yeah. She dreamed big, she knew that things could be different. And she dreamed it, and she wanted it, and she, she didn't really read the Bible that much, but she had lots of one-to-ones with God. Lots of one-to-ones. God took her from one place, to another. But you know what? Even though the church couldn't see the fruit for a long time, it's because he was dealing with the root. Yes, very good. He was grounding her. Yeah. He was showing her where he was. He was loving her. Yes. And he replaced everything that she lost. Everything she lost, he replaced. God is amazing. My faith is in what I see, what he does in people. What he did in that girl. From that desperate time when she nearly lost her life. And I tell you, there was medical evidence 
She didn't see it like that. She was having a really rough bump. There's medical evidence. Her heart was failing. Organs were shut down. It was real life. And the church was desperate. They were frantic. Absolutely frantic. From that story, from that situation, he has put that person in front of you. That's what God can do. So when I talk about running the race, staying in your lane, I'm passionate, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm passionate about it. Because it's true. Yes. It's true for me, it's true for you. Yes. It's a bit like riding a bike. If you get on a bike without stabilizers, because that spoils the story. If you get on a bike, when you learn to ride a bike, if you look down and you're trying to like, you're actually going to fall. You're going to fall. You think, oh my God, you're never going to know that. So what does a good parent do? He puts his hand on the saddle. He says, don't look down, look forward. And he pushes you. Sorry. Just keep going. Just keep going. He pushes you off. So keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, you can do it, you can do it. And if he falls, he's like, come on, get your back on track. And he puts his hand under the sun. He goes, go on, go on, go on, you can do it, keep pedaling, pedaling, don't stop pedaling, I'm going to say it. Don't, you know. <laughs> That's what God does yes. for us. He puts us in that lane. He pushes us off with the Holy Spirit. And he goes, come on, keep going, keep going, keep the faith. You know, remember those ancients before us, remember the people in front of you, remember what I did in your life. Come on, keep going, fix your eyes. Do what I planned to do. Yes. The plan and the purpose I have for your life. Go do it. Yes. Come on. He's... So I have actually come to the end, but like I said before, what entangles us? What hinders us? Are you prepared to pull away from your magnet? Yeah, very good. Are you prepared to do it? And grasp onto Jesus, even though it's hard sometimes, and it is. Because life happens, doesn't it? It's really hard to do that. But are you prepared to do it? Are you prepared to sacrifice yourself? And, and know that because you feel something doesn't mean it's a fact. Yeah. Jesus knows that. Jesus knows that we are attracted to default position. What are we prepared to do to stay in our lane? And to fix our eyes on Jesus, who's the author and perfecter of faith. That's it.